Welcome to Draw with Ref Tunes. I'm Paul Cox, and today I'm going to show you how to draw this cartoon version of Charles Spurgeon. So grab your drawing tools and let's get started. Okay, starting out, you can use whatever type of drawing materials you want. If you have pen and paper, you can use that. If you have markers um, and cardboard, you can use that. Uh, for my purposes here, I am using an iPad with uh, the program called Procreate, and I'm going to set my canvas size as the default screen size. So in, in this case, that is 2732 pixels by 2048 pixels. Of course, if you're drawing on paper, you don't have to worry about sizing because you will have what you have. <clears throat> So I'm going to start out with this, this blank canvas, and you should have a blank sheet of paper um, or a, a canvas on your iPad if you're using an iPad. The first thing I do when I'm drawing Charles Spurgeon is um, I look up some reference images. For example, um, these here are some reference images that you could use. You could... Um, find images in books or uh, on a Google search. Uh, however you find your reference images, um, it's just helpful to have some, re some sort of reference so that you can at least know that you are um, getting the drawing right or um, at least somewhat close to what the, the character is supposed to look like. So I'm going to start out with a um, these are all my brushes, so I'm going to grab this round sketch brush. I'm going to use that with black. I'm going to have make sure I have a layer open, and this is going to be my sketch layer. So the first thing I do when drawing Charles Spurgeon is I start out with his head, and um, <clears throat> Spurgeon's head has starts out with with a circle. Now if you're drawing the sketch on paper, you're going to want to draw lightly. Don't draw too too hard because you in the end you may want to erase your sketch lines. I draw a circle and I I imagine it as if it is a sphere and I draw this reference line kind of curving around like that. That's going to be my reference for the shape of his head. Okay, and I'm going to draw another one. So if I were to draw this all the way around, the dotted line would be like the uh, would be like the the uh, what you're seeing on the other side, as if it were a uh, a clear sphere. Okay, so that's that's kind of mapping. I call that mapping out the head. So you're mapping it because these are reference lines. Your eyes are going to go on either side of this line. This line helps you know where to set the eyes. And then in the center here, it helps you know where to put the nose and the mouth and, and so forth. So that's the first thing I do. Any character I draw, that is, that is how I start out drawing. So then we're going we're gonna to place some eyes here. Kind of a, a equal distance apart from this, say the center line is right there. Okay, and then I, I curve the eyebrows around the eyes. I start with the eyes uh, because I don't know there is, I don't know how accurate this is, or but I have found it to be true in in my drawings is that the eyes. Uh, I had a professor tell me once, the eyes are the window to the soul. And so you start with the eyes, and that helps bring the liveliness to the rest of the drawing. So I start with the eyes, either side of this, this curved line, and then I curve the eyebrows around, because if you ever look at a skull, you'll see that the 
the holes where the eyes, eye, the eye sockets go. They're kind of curved like that. So eyes would sit right inside there. So I, I look at these brows as kind of framing the eye sockets. So these, these eyebrows are sitting on top of the brows. They're framing the eye sockets, okay? So I picture it as if there would be sockets here. <clears throat> And I just picture that in my head. Um, and Spurgeon kind of has these sleepy eyes, I call them. Spurgeon's sleepy eyes. And then I'll draw his nose coming down here like that. And then curve it up. And give a little, a little swish right there. <clears throat> okay, so Spurgeon has a big beard, and so I, how I draw Spurgeon, you, you may have a different way of, of doing this. You may want to, some people want to fashion out the whole chin area and then add a beard to it. Um, I don't do that typically. I just, I know the shape of the beard that I want, and so I just kind of rough in that shape like this. I know he's facing this way, so it's going to be the angled this way, okay? And then, and then I just kind of roughly sketch in some hairy parts. <laughs> he has a, uh, he, he, some photos shows he has like this swoosh. I don't know what to call it. This curved part at the bottom of his beard. It's like a swoosh. And, uh, so I just roughly lay that in, curve it up around and it's like a, make it like an S shape where you think the chin is going to be. It's kind of like right where the the hair meets the circle here. You kind of curve it up the other way and then curve it back and put his ear in right there. Okay? And then we do for my cartoon ear details, it's usually just like a fancy looking H. So then I use this line of reference in the middle here for his mouth and then I frame his mouth with his mustache like that and then for the lines in the middle I just throw in a bunch of lines. I don't count them. You can count them if you want um, but I don't. And he's got this little tuft of hair right there and then his this part right here would be skin color, right here. Okay. And then we do this for the beard coming up along here. Bring it in here, up, and then all the way over. Okay, and for his hair, I usually start out with like two, two like spikes of grass. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. And you curl around like that. And then curl around like that. And the side of his hair. And I actually need to erase this because I brought that too far out. If you get too far out, that's fine. That's what erasers are for. And I'm just going to lay in his ear right here. There we go. And so I'm going to pretend his neck goes down like that. And then give him a little bit of a shoulder here. Just to kind of finish it out. And a suit coat. 
like that. Get rid of that. So there's the there's the basic sketch of Spurgeon. Um, and if you see things that you want to tweak here and there, you can go feel free to to tweak them. Make this your own drawing. If you want to put a top hat on Spurgeon, you can put a top hat on him, or a, a cowboy hat, or um, uh, give him a whole body with a sword if you want to. <clears throat> but that's the uh, that's the basics of doing the sketch. Now let's move on to finishing this up. Now if you're using a uh, an iPad with a program like this, you can click on this layer, click on this little N on the layer, turn the opacity down to about 25%, 26%, give or take. Then you're going to push this plus icon up here. You're going to create a new layer, and this layer is over top of the sketch layer. So this is the sketch layer, and this is going to be the ink layer. I'm going to grab my ink brush, which I can't find. I should have had this ready. Oh, I know where it is. Here it is. Imported ink brush. Okay. Uh, you can choose whatever ink brush you want. But for my purposes, I'm going to use this one. So anytime, anytime you see the blue selected layer, that's the one that you is active, and you're, that's the one you're drawing on. So we're going to make sure this ink layer is active. And we're going to start by inking his eyes. Now you'll notice you can go thick to thin just by how much pressure you're putting on your brush here. And I like to start my lines out thin and then bring them thicker as as I draw them. So you'll notice some of my lines are thinner at the end then they get thicker as they get to the center. If you want to do that, that's cool. Uh, if you don't want to do that, that's fine too. Um, you ink how you want to ink. This is, and if you're using a, a pen or a um, pencil to do your f finished drawings and you want to, to get this thick to thin look, you can, what you can do is um, draw your line because if you're drawing with a pencil or a pen, a uh, ballpoint pen or anything, you're going to have one, one thickness to your line. So what you can do then is get the, all the lines drawn, then go in and uh, add some more lines like this, and then just color that in to make your thick to thin line. So that's just a, one technique you can use if you're, if you're not drawing digitally. So now it's just a matter of going over and tracing your lines. And sometimes in the ink stage, I, I fix some things that I don't like. So like right in here, it looks a little too rounded, and I want it to feel more like a cheek. So I'm going to bring this in and then go out, just like that. And I'm going to add a little bit of hair here, and I'm going to simplify that a little bit more right there okay so as you're drawing think about your drawing think about what it looks like and think about ways that you might be able to fix different parts that you you may think are not not really working so here I'm just I'm not really following these lines because these ones 
don't necessarily matter where they are or how many of them there are. It just matters that they're there. I'm going to give them a little bit of a smile there. Okay. So, and and I felt like his his forehead was a little short, so I'm going to just kind of draw up over my line a little bit. Give him some forehead lines. Okay. And you zoom in and zoom out and twist the page however you need to. Uh, depending on on what you're using and like I said this this layer is only drawing on this layer so I can remove the bottom layer and it'll only show my inks so that's that's the kind of the goal that we're working towards is is getting all the inks laid in so that we can turn off our sketch layer and once the sketch layer is turned off then we can color it So now I'm just going in, finishing up all these inks here, and once these are finished, we can move on to the coloring phase. So just follow your, your lines, and again, you don't have to follow them exactly. You just follow them however you feel like. Really, it's, it's up to you because this is your final drawing. Um, and so however you want it to look is how, how it needs to look. So. And if you want to make, you don't even have to use black. You, you can use whatever color you want. You could use a different color for each element. So if you wanted to do the, the lines of his hair in brown and the lines of his skin in like a peach color or blue, pink, however you want. Now I'm just adding some lines of hair into his beard here. And I'll finish up his clothes here. It's really not, it's really not that difficult to, um, uh, to ink over your sketch once you have your sketch how you want it to be. Um, the, the inking is, to me, the inking is the most fun part because you don't have to do as much thinking as you do in the sketch phase. So here we have our sketch, and then we have our inks, and we can turn off our sketch layer. Or if you are drawing on with pencil and paper, pen and paper, you can wait for your ink to dry. I would set it aside for a few minutes, maybe set it in front of a fan or something to let the ink dry. Then you can go and take an eraser and lightly, lightly, I stress this, lightly, don't, don't push too hard on your eraser, but lightly erase the pencil lines. Try to avoid going over the ink lines if you can, uh, but if you can't, that's okay. Try to just just try to to get all the pencil lines erased and then you can um, have a nice clean drawing to color okay and when we're gonna color uh, remember how we put this layer over top of the sketch layer we're gonna select the sketch layer and press the plus sign to make a color layer underneath the ink layer. We want it underneath the ink layer so that we can go 
um, so that we can color under the ink layer like this without coloring over the ink layer. If this was above the ink layer, we would lose our inks when we start to color. So we want to make sure that it is under the ink layer. Okay. So now I can set this in this program. I can set the ink layer as a reference layer. And I can drag this color over here and I can color in the parts that I want colored. Now it may not work for everything, so some things like this you'll have to oops. Make sure my paintbrush is selected, not my eraser. And uh, see what I did? I accidentally colored on the ink layer. I don't want that. So we're going to do this again. Make sure I'm on the color layer. We're just going to lay in flat colors. Again, this is, I'm showing you how I draw and color these characters. You can follow along if you'd like, or you can just pick and choose different ways, different, different uh, uh, things that I'm doing and then make them your own. You don't have to follow completely what I'm doing here. Um, again, I'm just showing you my way. And if you have a different way of, of doing, doing this, I would love to hear your way because maybe it could be it could save me some time <laughs> so let me know in the comments if if you have a different way of doing this so right now it's just just a matter of coloring coloring everything um, and I'm not going to edit these videos out so that you can see the full process how long it takes um, there may be some tidbits of information that you may find helpful so I want to I want to have these be as raw and um, real as possible um, to to give you a, a realistic sense of what it takes to to do a drawing from start to finish because a lot of times we see people draw things or we see people post these drawings and we, we think it just automatically happens but it takes a lot of time to do a drawing um, and so going through the whole process your, yourself can help give you an, an appreciation for it and maybe it's something that you may want to um, think about going into as a as a career or as a as a hobby and hopefully this is these videos will be helpful now there is a way that I could do this this program particularly is is limited in what I can do so I'll show you one thing that that I can do is I can create these little gaps here just kidding I guess I can't hmm um, I would have to I would have to create this as the reference layer I think or take remove this as the reference layer so we'll remove that as the reference layer Make sure we're on the color layer. Drag this in. There we go. Now I can fill that in a little better. So if I do this and I outline the whole thing, the whole beard, I can color that in like that and then go in with my brush 
and to fix all these little dots here that, that I missed. Okay, and I'm going to do a kind of a gray color for his suit. I'm actually going to change my color picker. All right, so here's the gray suit, and we're just going to make it end right there. Draw the outline. And then bring this down, bring this down, bring this down, and there we have it. So now I'm going to do one more layer above the color layer. I'm going to click that N, I'm going to turn it into a multiply layer. I'm going to turn the opacity down to about 35. And I'm going to choose purple because I like to do shadows in purple. And I'm going to do go around and do the shadows. So I'm going to think about my light source. It's going to go from that direction. And so the light's going to hit everything on top. Everything underneath is going to be in shadow. So like the eyes, they're going to be in shadow mostly like this. And I typically just do like a, for these guys, do a full shadow underneath underneath there. The nose underneath is going to be in shadow. And I don't know if you guys hear that, but my chickens are laying eggs. <laughs> not sure if the video is going to be able to catch that or not. If it does, I apologize. Now for the beard, I just I I shadow it as if the shadow is part of the hair here. And I only do kind of the the bottom edge of the beard. And we'll do his head's gonna be kind of casting a shadow down this way and we'll do all of this in shadow down here and give him a little bit of shadow on his cheek here and his forehead up here in the hair <coughs> And on the back of his head here. I don't go crazy with the shadows. And I'm actually going to I'm going to redo these shadows on the eyes. So we'll do this. I think I'm going to leave the top of his lid. out of shadow. Okay, and then if you want, you can do one more layer and grab white and just do a little shine in various parts. I sometimes like to highlight the hair or the side of the head or face where the light is shining. I just throw some highlights 
here and there in his hair. Then I will go in and turn the opacity down to about 40%. No, not 40. Then you can barely see it. Oh, whoops. I meant, okay, that should be normal. Yeah, 40% works. And let's just get rid of this here. There we have it. We have our drawing of Charles Spurgeon, the Prince of Preachers. Thank you for drawing with me today. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you drew along with me, I would love to see your artwork. If you post it on social media, tag RefTunes and use the hashtag DrawWithRefTunes. And I will reshare it on all of the RefTunes social medias. And I thank you so much for joining me. Have a good day.